Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Hashi Talks India. And today's talk is going to be about test-driven delivery of infrastructure as code. Uh, and, and we will be uh, understanding how to test uh, infrastructure as code, especially Terraform code, uh, using uh, two of the tools, both for unit test and integration test, and how to structure it and how you can uh, get the benefits of uh, testing infrastructure as code. So let's get started. First up, uh, why test-driven delivery and why do I call it uh, test-driven delivery and not test-driven development or TDD, which is a common term used for uh, application testing. Uh, first off, for infrastructure, we all know that until and unless it is being uh, tested or used, uh, we really don't know whether the infrastructure has been created properly or not. So first off, test-driven delivery because it has to be delivered uh, even if it is for development purposes or for testing purposes, it has to be delivered to the users so that it can be, uh, you can see uh, how it works. So first up is reducing burden on application development cycle. So if you do not do test uh, before delivery, uh, you will be imposing more burden on your application development cycle to also test your infrastructure. Let's say you are creating infrastructure for your development purposes and you will have you, you do not have tests or you do not do test or you're dependent on manual verification through um, your console etc then uh, you will have to wait until your application is deployed on that infrastructure to see that every requirement that the application has uh, from infrastructure is actually satisfied by the infrastructure scope so that means your um, infrastructure development cycle increases and it puts extra uh, response Responsibility on the application development cycle because then things can fail in application due to the infrastructure. So that is why it is better to do test before you are delivering the infrastructure so that you reduce that uh, infrastructure testing burden because application already would have a lot of testing scenarios. In, you do not want to impose even infrastructure testing on the application development cycle. So that's why reducing burden on application development cycle. Second reason uh, is maintain production sanity uh, it must work from dev to prod the whole reason of the entire devops movement 10 years back or, or more than 10 years back uh, rather uh, was because we were facing issues uh, in developing and uh, you know releasing in production we would see a lot of production issues we would see common scenarios like things in development but it fails in production so maintaining production sanity is very important and that is why you need to test more and test early, so, uh, especially infrastructure, and reduce testing or, or do no testing on production at all. You need to be absolutely sure that if you're doing any uh, upgrades, any new addition to your infrastructure, it should work in production and it should not break production. So maintaining production sanity is important and that is why you should test before delivery and do test driven delivery. Third is zero downtime updates. We know uh, technologies and updates keep coming in every month and sometimes even weeks, especially uh, if you're using cloud, you'd see that uh, the cloud providers release uh, to keep up with the latest technologies. They also upgrade their technologies. Let's say Kubernetes releases almost every month. There is a new version every month. And in line with that, even the, the cloud provider will upgrade it. So you will need to do regular updates and it's more, more and nowadays it has been become more frequent with the uh, you know extend or uh, with the extension of softwares and newer software coming in so you cannot afford uh, downtimes every month for your production or even your development if your developer is stuck for days because of a version upgrade it really hampers the entire release cycle so that is why zero downtime updates is possible only when you test your infrastructure prior to uh, prior to putting it in in the development in the application development cycle so for these zero downtime updates and uh, the last uh, three points it is really uh, not possible to mock everything like in application development where we do TDD, which is test driven development, where you can mock application features and write tests to fail the application. In infrastructure, it's slightly different. It is not possible to mock an entire AWS or VPC on your network. You would be able to mock it as per behavior, but not the exact uh, configurations that AWS have. And you should not and must not run tests in production and hence, uh, I call it test-driven delivery instead of test-driven development because it's not just developing or writing the code. It's actually testing before you are even 
running a you know uh, uh, even even you are executing the infrastructure as code so delivery starts from day one of your infrastructure as code and hence i call it test driven delivery so what do you know how do uh, we do test driven delivery or test infrastructure as code you need two different two things first up is environments on demand environment on demand is a setup where you can spin up environment uh, do changes and and then de it can be decommissioned or recreated at any time within minutes basically a dynamic setup environments which can be brought up and it it can be as close as possible to production and it, it can be tested and then it can be brought down uh, this kind of environment on demand enables you to have uh, faster testing cycles and faster uh, you know delivery cycle because then you can do part performance based auto scaling and continuous delivery and in fact you can also test backward compatibility so this is uh, very important that you can spin up and spin down environments on demand so that you can test them and at the same time you can also have a balance on your financial expenses on cloud so that um, if you do not have it you will have to retain an environment for a longer period of time just to test it but if you adopt the concept and if you write your infrastructure as code with respect to creating environments on demand then you have the flexibility of creating an environment within minutes doing all the tests be it performance it can even be security testing and then satisfying it exporting this con configs to uh, you know, production um, and and then you just retire that environment and so you can do testing on demand and you don't have to spend a lot of money on on the environments the second important thing that you need for test driven delivery is modular infrastructure or modular infrastructure as code uh, you should not just automate uh, nowadays writing infrastructure as code has become very easy with terraform because it's a dsl you do not uh, you, you don't have to absolutely have programming um, you know experience you can get started on day one and it's it's pretty uh, easy to get on board it so it may in, on one hand terraform makes it very easy to uh, start infrastructure as coding but you should also follow some of the best practices of how to write uh, terraform or what gives modularity to your infrastructure so don't just automate or write everything inside one piece of uh, code repository and put everything inside it try to modularize and parameterize your terraform uh, code or your infrastructure as code whichever, whichever tools you are using make sure you can uh, separate or segregate the units which are reusable or which can be reused in different parts of your uh, you know software uh, or your projects uh, or your organization so re re segregate the code into reusable modules and even terraform follows that if you have seen terraform registries it has a concept of modules uh, for um, individual uh, resources or uh, services that the cloud providers or, or whichever provider uh, uh, we are using so segregate the code we'll have to segregate the code into reusable modules and then we'll have to create deployable environment specific provisional which are also modules so i call it the module and provisional uh, setup uh, or modular infrastructure as code so cre i create modules and which can be tested individually as as uh, as units or we call it unit test and then we have provisional modules which can be uh, which are the integration of all these modules into the actual environments where the software is going to be delivered so let's uh, get into uh, some uh, demo and let's see how this works in real life with terraform code so today's demo is going to be with uh, terraform uh, for infrastructure as code inspect for unit test of terraform modules and terra test for integration test of the provisioners uh, or the environment specific uh, deployers so when i talk about uh, modular infrastructure as code uh, you can see here is my um, here is my code structure um, so i divide my uh, code into terraform modules which are individual units which can be reused to uh, constitute different kind of environment uh, uh, setup uh, so i have a module separated in uh, different repositories and the good part of splitting it into modules uh, individual modules is that i can test 
them independently without impacting uh, the entire infrastructure as code uh, or uh, without impacting other environments because let's say i want to test network then i can just spin up uh, this network module and i can test uh, various uh, configurations within the network let's say i want to add an extra gateway i can test it i want to add an uh, extra subnet uh, then i can just add it to this module and i can run my test in, into it um, and uh, sometimes uh, some environments may not need everything that you have uh, but some may need everything you have let's say it, it may not need your certificate so acn uh, today's demo i'm showing the code with respect to aws so these are all aws uh, specific modules Modules. So ACM is AWS Certificate Manager. So let's say some needs a certificate, some do not need certificate. So you do not necessarily have to include everything. If you have everything inside one code repository and do not split it, then unnecessarily you will have to also implement these resources, which is not is not required by an environment. And plus, multi-tenant deployment becomes difficult if you do not split it into modules or if you do not uh, create modular infrastructure as code. The next set of uh, module I have, I call them provisioners. And these are actually the environment on demands that we create using the modules which are here. So as you can see, um, you can have environments. Let's say you, you can have admin environments, uh, which can have all your centralized admin components. Let's say your VPNs, your CI, CD, your uh, logging, monitoring, your security and SIAM uh, services, etc. So uh, you can have like this, and then you can have your non-production, uh, which can be your dev QA staging. Um, and, uh, and these are separate repositories, which you can have. Plus, you can split your production because uh, it's better in terms of security uh, as well to keep your production and non-production in a separate environment uh, or separate repository so you do not impact the production. Um, and this way, you can actually, so if you look at uh, my non-production environment, for example, I have uh, a base uh, configuration first, which will create a Terraform backend. And then it will create a public zone, which is a DNS zone, which I'll be using uh, for my uh, environment, for my non-production environment. And then I create the network here. So you can see all of these. So the, uh, the practice that I follow is that provisioners should only refer to modules and modules should only refer to resources. And that way I can uh, do changes in one place and it gets updated in multiple environments. Uh, and I can, you know, promote it to multiple environments because otherwise I have to go to each, I'll have to go to each environment and do a change. Let's say I, I want to add an extra subnet uh, in my environment, then I'll have to go to each of them and update. But in this case, if I only change my PF network module, uh, it will be uh, updated in uh, one side test, of course, it will be updated in all the environments. So, uh, here, uh, this is how I structure environment on demand here. Now to deploy, uh, let's say even in non-production, you might need multiple environments for testing multiple scenarios. For example, you might need a development testing environment, and you need a user acceptance testing or UAT environment, or you might even need a exact replica of production, which is for performance testing because uh, mo especially for SaaS or online-based services, you would see uh, most often features are released in terms of onboarding more customers. So when you have so such kind of feature, you need to test whether your environment is actually performance ready. So in those cases, you need uh, an, uh, a temporary performance uh, testing environment. So uh, then you can create, uh, uh, you can actually create it in the non-production uh, repository uh, and use Terraform workspace. So in Terra, when you use Terraform workspace for your environment, you don't have to uh, create like a dev repository, QA repository, performance test, which you may not need forever. So what you can instead do is you can have a non-prod repository and use Terraform workspace within that, and you can switch between environments. So your states are actually uh, uh, you know, separated out uh, within the non-production uh, setup. Now let's look at how it actually works. Uh, I'm using uh, AWS, so my backend is S3. So I'll uh, show show you how uh, the configuration works in terms of uh, 
uh, S3. So the first step, uh, uh, what we are going to do is we, we are going to execute each of these uh, modules step by step, and then we are going to test each one of them uh, using inspect. And uh, then we are going to do an end-to-end -end testing using Terra test. So let's see. Uh, let's first look into the unit test. So first up is base. So before we create the non-prod network, we need to create the backend and the zones for the non-prod network. And in this uh, uh, demo, I'm also going to show, apart from network, we are going to deploy uh, an EKS uh, cluster, and uh, we are going to deploy an application. So we'll, we'll test the end-to-end -end flow of uh, uh, first we test unit by unit, like first the network, first the, uh, the initial backend setup, and then the network setup, and then the EK cluster deployment. And then we are going to do an end-to-end -end test where it will show that the, an application depend, the EK cluster is successfully created, and it can be used for application deployment. So let's see first uh, is, so I'm inside my non-prod repository, and I'm going to uh, go inside my base. So uh, you need to do some initial setup for inspect. Uh, so I would re recommend that you go to inspect's website and see what uh, inspect is based on Ruby. So you need to install some gem files uh, and set up uh, in inspect on your local machine, or, or if you are using CI on your CI agent or Docker containers, whichever you prefer, you can use it. I'm going to show this uh, demo on my local machine, but I will also show you how I use it on my CI if time permits. So first up, once you have installed uh, uh, inspect, uh, you will have to create, you will have to initialize inspect. And when you do test in inspect initialization, it will create a certain structure. Uh, and you can see the uh, structure that you can see here is uh, it has a verified directory and then it has an inspect.yaml. So very inside the verified directory, you have uh, something called as controls. This is where the uh, inspect resources and tests are written. So inspect is also a DSL like Terraform. So when you are actually executing inspect, you will find a lot, the structure is a lot similar to how Terraform resources are. And uh, the reason I use inspect is it generates a good report at the end. Plus, since it's a DSL, it's easier uh, for onboarding. You don't need to have um, programming background or you know be an expert in certain Ruby to write inspect code. So some, so you can get started uh, with inspect uh, for your unit testing. So here I have written an inspect test file inside its control uh, where I'm going to test. So basically, in in the base. Uh, a provisioner i'm i'm creating a terraform backend using st bucket so i'm going to check whether the bucket is created and whether the bucket is this bucket is a private bucket it should not be public because it will have my terraform state so i'm testing whether it is uh, and testing that it should not be public and it should exist and taking the bucket name all these uh, uh, values from uh, a file called terraform json now terraform json is being created from the Terraform output, uh, which is run uh, when I execute Terraform apply. So uh, here we go. First, we do Terraform apply, of course, to run the entire setup. So yeah, um, you can see no changes because I have already run Terraform apply to save some time. So it has executed Terraform apply. Now once Terraform apply is done, I need to run a Terraform. I need to copy the Terraform uh, uh, output into a JSON file so that Inspect can read. So I'm going to copy. Uh, I'm going to run Terraform output and uh, export it into JSON format under. Uh, files uh, terraform.json, which is uh, within the inspect directory itself, which is files terraform. And this is a standard structure of in inspect. So when you are creating inspect in it, it will actually create a files directory. So you can use the inspect function, profile, uh, and then file. So it's actually in the inside the profile, it will create it. So uh, 
you can just follow the same thing so you do this and now i'm going to run the test the command is inspect exec test verify And this is going to uh, check the Terraform output, uh, the uh, JSON file, and then to validate all the configurations. OK, so it, it has a fail because it is not able to find my uh, region. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to export my region I'm using AP South one, which is uh, AWS region AP South one, and now I'm going to run my inspect test. So you see the test was successful and it has actually returned all the, so the S3 bucket name is this, and it is exist, it is expected to exist, so it is a green and, and likewise. And uh, then it has also checked for all my name servers, which are correct, and uh, the private zone, uh, it's and the zone is public, uh, because I'll be using it for my certificates for EKS cluster, so it has tested. So this way I'm able to test unit by unit, Likewise, uh, I will go to my network and then I've already executed my network. Uh, so all I'm going to do is actually uh, copy my output into uh, my file. So once you do Terraform apply, uh, then you have to do Terraform um, output and copy it to JSON file and then you run inspect. So inspect uh, this way you can test module by module. Uh, and um, in fact, you can go one step ahead and the AWS modules that I have shown here, you can in fact add your test inside each of the modules. It's like an unit test. So whenever you are um, pushing a code inside your uh, network module, it will automatically run your test. Uh, you can set your pipeline to run automatically inside your test. And that way you can have the real uh, modular testing. For today's demo, I'm showing it from the provisional side because I've just structured it to make it faster. So here you see uh, it has failed. So if it fails, it will fail. Um, here it says that it has to include tags call environment so probably my tag is different it is not uh, including it but it has it has tested some of the other um, uh, uh, subnets so likewise you can create your test cases and check whether it is actually uh, satisfying your uh, uh, environment or not because uh, here uh, you know this is how you are you can test uh, your unit by unit now let's say uh, we have tested it unit by unit now, how do we test it? Uh, we are creating an EKS uh, cluster. So for our EKS cluster, uh, I'll be running uh, my tests again. And let's see how, uh, when an EKS cluster is uh, created, um, it is created with, I am also deploying an ingress. So it, it creates, a, you know, uh, it deploys a dummy service which is actually accessible through so you can see uh, my dummy service is shared eks ingress now what i'm going to do is in my integration test i'm going to check whether my eks uh, whether the end to end stuff like network um, is created and then the eks cluster is able to deploy or not so if i run so here i'm going to first run my uh, inspect and let's see. So how do we do integration test? Once you have run a module by module test using inspect, uh, you would also want to know the entire flow, whether it is working or not. And for that, we are going to use Terra test. 
So this is how TerraTest works. TerraTest needs some bit of a programming uh, back, uh, background because it is based in, uh, on Go, Golang. So you, you need to understand Golang uh, to write TerraTest, but uh, you can fairly use it. So if you see uh, the uh, the the reason TerraTest can be used for integration test is that it also includes an init apply. So in inspect, we have to apply Terraform apply and Terraform output separately and then run the inspect command. You can, of course, integrate them within your CI scripts. But if you want to run it locally, run the entire end-to-end -end test, you can use TerraTest using init apply. Uh, and, uh, and then you can create your conditions like, say, URL equal to public endpoint, then HTTP, uh, you can go. And uh, here I'm checking my uh, ingress endpoint here. So yeah, so my uh, setup is uh, EKS is ready. I'm just going to go back to my root, which is my non-prod uh, repository. And I'm only going to run. I'm going to go inside my test repository. And I'm going to run my go command so that uh, it runs the end-to-end -end test. So here you, you see that it will. Uh, so the reason you can I chose to use TerraTest for integration test is that in integration test you can you can test the entire flow in one co uh, command. So you can have all your uh, you know you can go directory by directory, run your module by module, and then it will test the endpoint integration that your final service, which is your ingress uh, uh, or your application, which is deployed on your. EKS cluster is actually working. Once it works, they can give your EKS cluster to your development team, and then they can use it uh, for their application deployment. Um, one uh, difference between Inspect and TerraTest is that Inspect gives you a nice report like this. Uh, the reports in TerraTest is kind of uh, within uh, like the Terraform uh, log. So you might find it difficult uh, sometimes when you're running it in CI, but uh, it serves the purpose. So you, you can see the logs are actually within. Um, so what I prefer is a combination of both so that module by module, I get a report and then I can run the entire end-to-end -end test and get the final, uh, you know, the result where the application is working or not. So you see the final result, okay, test is passed. So it, it will only give you this. It does not have a nice formatting like Inspect has. So you can use a combination of both. But then again, there is a, uh, one thing in Inspect where you need to apply it separately, copy the output, and then run Inspect. So yeah, there are uh, you know um, some pros and cons in both. But you can combine both of them and uh, you know create your test-driven delivery pipeline in your CI, which can uh, look something uh, similar. Uh, similar to uh, your in your if you're using gitlab or if you're using jenkins you can have them within your stages so here in uh, this is how uh, your test uh, can look like when you're doing test driven delivery with terraform and you can use inspect or terra test or there can be other uh, you know, tools which can be used uh, you can use javascript tools as well to test if you are uh, comfortable with uh, javascript programming um, however for users or practitioners uh, who are uh, not familiar with those scripting languages i find these two scripting tools are easier for onboarding and serves the purpose so this is how my pipelines look like uh, first up i'll do linting uh, i did not have time to show that but uh, linting is uh, Terraform using Terraform formatting, which tests uh, any kind of syntax error in your Terraform. So you can add linting, and then it can run Terraform validate and Terraform plan. Then you, you can run the inspect test, which is the unit test for every module. And then you can run your Terra test, which is the entire setup in one flow, which is the end-to-end -end testing, to, uh, which ends with your uh, like a dummy application or any service, which you can or you can use HTTP. So thank you so much. Um, this here, here ends test driven delivery talk uh, on infrastructure as code. I hope this talk is useful uh, for you and you can uh, utilize it in your day-to-day -day, uh, Terraform coding and it helps you in getting some of the issues. It helps you in uh, expediting your development process and saves you time from going uh, from into the console and verifying each and every components uh, after you deploy. So I think this, I hope this works.
you can connect me in these are my uh, social media links and you can also uh, take a look at 10factorinfra.com i write a lot about infrastructure telecom etc there so that's all for today thank you